So I've heard you want some cool items, but you have only a raw rune to your name? Fear not, we can make this work. I have finally bought the game, so I can provide some up-to-date, remastered footage. So today we are going to cover 5 things. First one, goals and mindset. Second one, builds. Third one, items. Fourth one, locations. And the last one, is it better to have zero magic find? Let's find out. So, number one, goals and mindset. By having a magic find bonus on your gear, you increase your chances, chances to find magical, rare and unique items. You will have to find a good balance between magic find, survivability and clear speed. And there are also diminishing returns on magic find. Your chance to find magical items increases proportionally to your magic find but the chance to find rares, sets and uniques is not increased by that much. If you have a look at this, at this table, you can see that for example at 200 magic find, your increased chance to find the unique items is only 111 and if you look at something like 400, the chance to find magical items is still increased like by the 400 of your magic find but for unique it's only 153, for set it's 222 and for rare it's 240. So you gain much more going on from 0 to 300 than from going from 300 to 600. I would say having between 200 and 300 magic find is great, going over 400 might not be worth it. No reason to have magic find through the roof when it takes you like 10 minutes to kill Mephisto. If you want to teleport around, your only cheap option is a sorceress, which I will discuss, discuss, discuss in the build section. You are dirt poor, so let's pretend Enigma does not exist and sorceress is the only way to teleport without spending all the gold or all runes on repairing items. Teleporting is hands down the most effective way to magic find, but it is not mandatory and sometimes I get really bored by it. I find it sort of mind numbing just to teleport to the boss, kill it and make a new game. I like to clear the whole locations, it might not be as effective for magic find, but you will find more runes, charms and other items. I also like to sort of play through the game without being rushed. I would do sort of a speedrun through the difficulty with some occasional farm spots where I would waste some time looking for goodies, mainly countess. Now with a free respec in every difficulty you can just use the best leveling build and respec later, but especially when you are fresh you want to do some magic finding along the way. You can get some nice items even in Nightmare and even if you get rushed through normal and Nightmare, I would say don't get rushed through hell. It is actually fun to play through and so I give some bonus points to builds which can actually play through the game without being crushed. So let's start with the builds. Number 2. Builds There are many strong magic find builds, but some of them require expensive items to work well. For example Lightning Sorceress, which is very very fast, very very strong and also very very expensive to build. I won't go in depth on, uh, on the builds, there are many variants and detailed resources all around the internet but I just want to give you general direction with the build. So we just have to start with the Sorceress, which is still the most effective option, no matter which way you look at it. I would recommend Meteor, which is Meteor and Frozen Orb combination. You can start as a Fire Sorceress, which is probably the best start, best to start leveling with. Once you hit around level 50, which can be done even on normal bail runs, you will slowly start adding points to the cold skill tree. Your goal is to get 20 points to frozen ore before you continue adding more synergies for meteor and fireball in higher levels. Having two elements is important if you are trying to play through hell, where you will encounter a lot of immune monsters. Cold and fire immune monsters are not super common, but your mercenary should be able to deal with those after you hit them with a few statics. One of those monsters, sadly, is Countess, which sucks, but her minions have only one immunity, so it is still very much doable with the mercenary. Blizzard Sorceress is another great build, better than Meteorb in raw power, but a little bit more specialized. 
It utilizes only the cold spells, mainly Blizzard, so it is not a good pick if you are trying to play through hell. You would be farming Mephisto most of the time, but some of the best farming spots are without cold immunes. If you are done with the playthrough, enjoy running the best spots for Blizzard Sorcerers, there is no reason to skip this build. Lightning Sorcerers is more gear dependent, so I would wait before respecting to Lightning. Fire, sor fire Sorcerers... Fire? Sorcerers? <laughs> what the hell? Fire Sorcerers is fun, you can get pretty solid damage and it is great for farming Endarial and Mephisto. But again, a single element limits what you can run. Also, 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 not a good idea for hell playthrough. So for the sorceresses, I would stick with Meteor Sorcerers and I will probably build one once I have more time to play. Paladin! Oh, well, let's get through this one. Hammerdin, which is a paladin who uses the Blessed Hammer skill. It is the cheesiest build in the game. People say that Hammerdin equipment is expensive but it can clear everything even naked. The only limiting factor is the price of Enigma, so no teleport for start accounts. But if you manage to build your wealth, you can really clear all the content in the game, even Ubers. One point in Smite is all you need with the right gear. I used to have a Filterage Hammerdin back in the day, and it could get the keys, organs and the torch all by itself without any issues. Assassin! Trapsin is one of my favorite builds actually, and especially the Rifsin hybrid, but that is for a separate video, I guess. You can start as a Far Trapsin, who melts normal and beginning of the nightmare, then you respect to Lightning Sentry and Death Sentry. This gives you lightning damage and corpse explosion, which is physical and fire damage. You can clear whole rooms real fast without even facing any danger. The playstyle can be very active. You have amazing crowd control and utility skills. Burst of speed to move and lay traps faster or fade which helps you to cover some resistances when your gear sucks. Trapsin used to be bugged because using traps reduced the number of unique monsters spawned in areas, but it was fixed in D2 Resurrected, so it seems Trapsin is back on the menu, boys. This is so far the only character I have made in Diablo 2 Resurrected, and it was a great fun to play through the game. You can struggle in hell unless you have enough points in Fire Blast to deal with lightning immunes. My run through Megot's Lair was quite a challenge, but mainly because I forgot to always go right and clear the whole level by trying to go left. Amazon, Lightning Fury, Charge Strike Amazon was the first character I made in Diablo 2 all those years ago, I don't even know how long. <laughs> It is very strong even in crappy gear, but having a single element with a tiny bit of physical damage is not the best for the hell playthrough. If you gear her right, it's almost scary. Frozen Arrow and Explosive Arrow Hybrid is a build I would like to play again if time allows. It is not very gear dependent, especially compared to physical archer build. You really want some plus skills, increased attack speed and resistances. Wall gear helps you tank or however it is pronounced. You have great crowd control and good AoE, especially with some pierce, which means arrows will fly through multiple monsters. Bows with plus bow skills are easy to find and there are some cheap rune wards to boost that even further. Another hybrid variant is Lightning Fury as a primary destruction method, with Freezing Arrow as a backup. It is pretty good at running Wardstone Keep actually, but I would be slightly less ambitious without any gear. Now that I think about it, I might prefer this one to the explosive Frozen Arrow Hybrid. Well, so many options, Amazons are just great. And it is also great that we can respect now, it wasn't possible during most of Diablo 2 existence. Druid, win Druid hands down. You have cold and physical damage, very few things can slow you down, tornadoes are a little bit annoying to aim, but bear is great summon to give you some meat shield while you try to hit stuff with your tornadoes. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but most of the bills would shine even more with enigma to teleport, but running is healthier, both for your body and for your brain. Necromancer, many builds, one skill. No matter which necromancer you build, Corpse Explosion is what will make it shine. 
extremely fast and clearing whole rooms. Item dependency is almost zero. Just get some lightning resistance to survive souls shooting at you. With Necromancer you just need a corpse and then you roll. So how do you get the first corpse? You can really on your mercenary, skeleton summons, poison spells or bone spells. Poison Nova is fast at clearing areas, especially together with Corpse Explosion. Can be a little bit slower at clearing and bosses from what I remember. And some immunities can also give you troubles if you cannot explode more corpses and your mercenary is weak. Summoner is a very safe way to play through the game and magic find, but it can be slow and boring for some people. Well, there is the corpse explosion of course, and once you get your first corpse not used for skellies, you can get rolling. Bone Necromancer is still viable, but I personally prefer the Summoner or Poison Nova. There are almost no monsters immune to magical damage, so it shares this perk with Hammered In. White Rune Ward is easy to make and gives you quite a boost, so it's something to consider. Barbarian! Okay, Berserker might be the best magic find build in the game. But it's expensive to run optimally and you would probably want to run specifically the pit dungeon in Act 1 Hell. The special ingredient here is the skill find item to give you extra drops. Not a good starting magic find build in my opinion, but I didn't want to make barbarians sad by not mentioning them. So there are probably many other viable builds. But these are the ones I would consider. Do you have any favorites? Let me know down below. And if you are still here, have a cookie and consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, that would be highly appreciated. Number 3. Items. There are many specific items which are good for each build and generally when you find a build guide, recommended items are listed. So I will focus on more general items and ways to get them when you are dirt poor. Most of the builds will like having plus skills, resistances and of course magic find bonus. Everything good for magic finding is expensive when you start a fresh leather season and becomes cheaper later on, so that might make trading difficult. But fear not, there are ways to get you started. The best bundle is often provided by rune words. There are some great cheap rune words which you can make with self found runes easily and they will greatly improve your capabilities. I have made a separate video for those so check the link below the video. Your best friends are spirit, insight and rhyme. Lem go tearful wealth rune word which gives you 100 to magic find is an option but you might find better uses for lem or co runes. Oh, and since I mentioned Amazons earlier with bows, Shell, Go and Nef makes Melody Rune Word and if you make it in a plus free bow, it is great and cheap option for your Amazon using a bow. Overall, don't be picky about the basis for, for these cheap rune wars as long as it is not too heavy. Another tip regarding the items is simply pick up stuff and do some shopping. Picking up every blue and yellow boots, gloves, rings and amulets is a good idea. They can have a magic find bonus together with other modifiers such as resistances. You can just shop for boots and gloves with magic find and I have found several with 20 plus magic find fairly fast this way. Similarly, you can find assassin claws, amazon bows, bows, bows and javelins and other class items with plus skills which will help you clear content faster. You can consider topaz gems when you put a perfect topaz in a body armor or a helmet. You get 24% bonus to magic find. You might be able to trade some items for your perfect gems, so this might be slightly wasteful. Especially if you are going to replace these items hopefully pretty fast with your magic finding success. But it depends on your options, which as I was saying before are limited at the start of the leather season. Maybe keep a few flawless topazes, which still give you a nice 20% bonus. So let's say you can get a 3 socket helmet and a 4 socket armor, which makes it 7 sockets in total. So 7 flawless topazes and you have 140 bonus magic find already. And 7 perfect topazes would give you 168, so I would be okay with just flawless ones. Like it's 30% of the price for 80% of the result and that is quite a good deal in my book. 
Gambling is another good way to get some early magic find items. You can try boots and gloves for the magic find bonus I mentioned before, but going for amulets and coronets or circlets can be much more interesting. These can get plus skill modifiers together with resistances and magic find bonus, even faster cast rate. Circlets and coronets can also have sockets where you can place your topazes. The higher your level, the better quality items you get, but or possibly get, but it is also more expensive, except for, for the jewelry, which seems to go for a fixed price. I would save my money until I get to at least to 70 plus before trying to gamble for something nice. You can make Edge Rune word, which is tier tell M in a bow, to reduce vendor prices by 15%. Careful if you're not an Amazon, some bows are Amazon only. Geet's Fortune Charm reduces the prices by 10 to 15%, so that's another option. Pick up and sell all the body armor, necro shields and wands and sorcerers, staves and orbs. Body armor sells well and things with any skills on them also fetch a premium. I see bonus lifesteal on coronets and circlets quite often for some reason, so consider keeping one for your mercenary as it can be tough finding some source of lifesteal for him early on. Another way to get the items is actually doing magic find runs and snowball from there, so let's check the locations. So number 4, locations. Don't feel bad for running in the Nightmare difficulty before moving to hell. Nightmare Mephisto is especially, especially good, but some early locations in hell are quite easy and can drop any item in the game. The most interesting early spot in each difficulty is going to be the tower in Black Marsh where the Countess is. Not a real magic find spot, but you will need those runes. You can actually stash your magic find gear and opt for the maximum run speed, both literal run walk speed and if you cannot teleport and kill efficiency plus survivability because magic find does not affect runes. And Daryl, Catacombs level 2, 3 and 4. Nightmare and Hell, better if you can teleport, but you can also kill a little along the way if you run. I, it used to be possible to quest back and Daryl to drop better loot, but so far I have found many conflicting reports on this in D2R. So I don't have the raw data, but once I make a sorceress I will do a few hundred runs and see and I will let you know. Mausoleum in Burial Grounds. It is a level 85 area in Hell, which means anything can drop here. Mostly lightning immune monsters, as far as I remember, and there should be no cold immune monsters. Monster density is not the greatest though. The pit in Temo Highland. Popular level 85 area, anything can drop. Another good one without teleport, you just have to run down from the outer cloister waypoint. Ancient tunnels, which is Act 2 under Lost City. Another level 85 era, no cult immunes, good monster density, overall pretty good spot. You just have to find it, which can take some time without teleport, you guessed it. Once you are inside, the teleport does not matter that much. Mephisto, hands down, you can get pretty good items here on Nightmare and Hell. Again, better if you can teleport, but you can also kill along the way if you run. Shank, Eldritch and Pindleskin in Act 5. All of these guys can be cleared fast and easily, you can add them to any other run you do. Shank and Eldritch are always cult immune, I think. The secret cow level. No. If you do lightning damage, you won't kill the cow king, which would earn you a lifetime ban to the cow level. Monster density is unreal. Other popular spots are Lower Kurast and Travinkel, Keo Sanctuary and the whole River of Flame are great areas too. Wardstone Keep might actually have worse difficulty to profit ratio than Chaos Sanctuary, but it is still a popular high-end area with the option to clear Bale and his minions. Nyatlak in the Halls of Wat also drops keys for Uber, so that's an extra reason to run him down. But all of these might be a little bit out of your pay grade, I would say. Number 5. Is it better to have zero magic find? There is also an alternative, I would say. Screw magic find, prioritize clear speed and survivability. Chances, chances. chances to drop runes and charms are the same with 0 and 1000 magic find, so 
you don't really need to care about that. And the more magic find you have, the worse is your chance to drop white and grey items, which can be used under rune war as rune ward bases. So having a character that can run hell or at least nightmare countess can be a good way to make some wealth to move on to more traditional magic finding. You have a small chance to get some high rune which can be enough to outfit yourself in a decent gear, but even getting Raul, Tear, Tal, Soul, Ort and M runes is great. You can collect them and sell them together as spirit packs and inside packs because people will be rerolling these rune words to get perfect results. So if you throw in a hell rune for each pack it makes it even better. So that's that. Do you have any questions or something to add? Let me know down below and if you are subscribed I will see you in the next one. Bye!